We know that Next.js automatically tries to optimize our app by marking routes as static when it detects that they will not change over time. It renders such content only once during build time and this would be an example of the SSD rendering strategy. And we saw an example of that in a lesson on static versus dynamic rendering. This is a page that does not depend upon any dynamic APIs and therefore Next.js will render this statically at build time. However, if we are loading the content of our page from an external solution like an external content management system, we can mark the fetch request to load that external content with cache no store. Once we have the content response, we can render it within the user interface. Next.js will automatically notice that this API call is being made with no store and therefore mark this page as dynamic and opt out of static site generation for this route. This is something that we've already looked at in our lesson on static versus dynamic rendering. But the reason of mentioning it again is to highlight it in the concept of SSG. And we've seen this output before. Static essentially means SSG or static site generation and dynamic means SSR or server side rendering. Note that Next.js caches fetch requests by default. So if you don't pass in the no store config option, then Next.js will assume that this fetch request is going to always return the same response. And therefore our page will no longer be dynamic and will be marked for static rendering. And we can verify that from the developer tools, the route has now been marked for static site generation. You can even take the Next.js ability to generate static pages to the next level and enable it for dynamic route segments by informing Next.js about all the paths that the route might support. To demonstrate this, we have a dynamic page that accepts a product name in its route parameters. Because this route depends upon a passed in parameter, Next.js will automatically mark this route as dynamic by default. Within our page file, we export a simple component that takes the product name as a parameter and then uses it to fetch the details for the product from an external API. Once we have the product details, we render them out in a simple user interface. And while we are using a product page as a demonstration, the same concept applies to various other application patterns, for example, blog posts. Note that we only created a single page route. However, it might service a number of different requests, for example, apple, orange, or banana. And that is the reason why dynamic routes result in dynamic pages because Next.js doesn't actually know what the final routes might be. Fortunately, a page route can export a method called generate static params, which can be used to tell Next.js the different params that the route supports. Next.js will run this function at build time to discover the different route segments. For this example, we make an API call to our content management system to get the different product names that our content has been configured for. Generate static params must return an array of objects where the property names in the objects must match the param names for the route. For our page, the param is called name. So we return an array of objects containing the name property. To verify that Next.js picks it up properly, we run a next build. And here you can see in the build output that for the route product name, Next.js picked up that they might be product apple, product orange, or product banana, because those were the values returned from our CMS. And then for these values, Next.js generated static HTML for these routes. These HTML files are written to disk and can be deployed to a CDN, which is something that a website hosting system like Vercel will do by default.